Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today's a beautiful day. It's another cool down, but it is a little bit windy, so I hope the audio is okay. But today I wanted to do a video on how I get season long color with plants that don't take as much water. We're having a serious drought here in the West, especially here in Utah. And I changed out my front yard from grass and I'll post a picture up at the top to show you what it looked like. But it used to be a lot of grass with some islands in it that had plants. And now it has no grass and a lot of plants. And I wanted to kind of go over the plants that I use that give it season long color. So the first plants I wanted to show you are not in bloom right now. Right now is the first of June, so I'll just post some pictures of them. But my plants start with the rock iris and the crocus. Those come out the earliest. They're absolutely gorgeous and there's just a drift of them throughout my front yard on both sides. Then come the daffodils and I absolutely love the daffodils and I have ordered more and they're coming in and I'm going to be planting some more of them. This year's display was extremely beautiful and it lasted a long time because we had a long cool spring. Then after the daffodils come tulips. Now I don't plant the you know your your normal garden tulips what i like are the species tulips they don't need to be lifted at the end of the year they are they naturalize and they come back when they want to now i want to show you what i've planted that come up after the bulbs now let's start with the side first first one is one of my favorites and it's just about in bloom and i will do another video when it is in bloom but this is my chase tree and I'll post a picture up at the top of what it looked like last year. Absolutely gorgeous, clear blue blooms. I, I love it. And this is a Shoals Creek chase tree. Gets about 12 feet tall. I'm going to keep it around eight, eight feet tall with pruning. And then I pair that with my moonshine yarrow. Now I'll show you on the other side. My yarrows are in full, full bloom. But this one has been waiting for the chase tree, I think. So we're going to have the yellow moonshine yarrow and the blue blooms of the chase tree. Right now it doesn't look like much, but it's going to be gorgeous later. Another thing that I forgot to add that is after the tulips and the daffodils are my irises. I have little dwarf irises in the front that are about two weeks earlier than the regular bearded iris, and I have bearded irises. These form just a really nice structural element when they're not in flower, but when they're in flower, they're glorious. And I will post a picture of what they look like. Another flower that I use are all sorts of different kinds of lilies. Now I'm not a lily aficionado. I don't know the names of all the varieties. This one might be a tiger lily, but it's the first one to start opening its blooms. And I think it's pretty cute. Let's see if we can get a closer picture of it. So, it's here, so here's what the blooms look like. They're kind of skinny, but they're really, really cute. So lilies are next. After that, come my butterfly bush. Now this is a pugster butterfly bush and they have huge blooms. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I'll post a video on the top that I took a while ago. I think it was two years ago when one of the representatives from, oh, I can't remember the name. It's on in the video, but they're partners with Proven Winners. And uh, she was at Progressive Plants. So I asked her if we could do a video about butterfly bush and uh, she obliged. So I'll post that video up at the top. But these are absolutely gorgeous. We have one amethyst. I think the one over here is an amethyst. And then the rest are pugster blue, which is my absolute favorite. Another flower that is more for the foliage than the flowers. It's my St. John's wort. And I'll post the scientific name and the, the variety name. Let me move my flag out of here. I'll post the scientific name and the variety name up at the top here, but I love this one. So as you can see, the berries are red, the flowers are yellow, and the leaves are absolutely a gorgeous dark color. And they bloom all season long, and you really have this color contrast all season long. Here's another one that's just about ready to bloom. This is one of my sedums. I don't know the variety. I got this on a plant tour 
a lady had it and it was in full bloom. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous and I commented to her how beautiful I thought it was. She reached down, pulled off a stem, handed it to me and said, go plant that in your yard. And this is what happened. They're very easy to propagate. I propagated these many times, just pulling them off and sticking them in the ground. And there, it has a decent season, you know, about three weeks worth of bloom where you get these gorgeous little yellow flowers that completely cover the top of it. And I love it. Here's another one that's going to bloom a little bit later in the season. This is going to be one of my August bloomers, July and August. This is a hardy hibiscus and I can't remember the name of this one. I've had it for a while, but it's got the dark foliage, so the dark foliage gives color. And then it's got gorgeous dinner plate sized pink blooms. Now this is a late this plant wakes up a lot later in the season. I don't usually see it, I don't usually see any growth on it until the beginning of June and then it starts flowering in August. But I absolutely love this plant. Another one for spring and summer are my lavenders. Now last year and the year before, these are the wee one lavenders. They stay tiny and these bloomed most of the season all the way through October. I don't know if that's a fluke, but we'll watch it this year. If it blooms all the way through October this year, then we'll know that these are just long blooming lavenders and I absolutely love them. Another plant for fall color is my mums. So this is a a deep maroon colored mum and I have one on the other side to match. Actually this one was just one that I dug up from that other plant. So we'll have these kind of as my fall capstones. They flank each side of the yard and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. So mums make great fall color and they're drought tolerant. Another one for drought tolerant color in the fall are my sedums. This sedum is absolutely gorgeous. It's going to have pink pink blooms in the fall and you can leave them up all winter for winter interest. And here's another sedum that is green. So sedums make great fall color. Another one for summer color are my hydrangeas, hydrangea paniculata. I think this is strawberry sundae or something like that. I'll post the name up at the top. But this is a hydrangea paniculata. We're going to be getting flowers here sometime in the summer. I don't see any buds yet, but I can feel them. So the buds are, are actually starting. Now this is a new one. It's called Little Lime Punch. I'm really excited to see how well this does. The heat is already starting to burn it. It seems like the first year, maybe even two, the heat will burn it in full sun here in Utah. But if you look at this one, it burned to a crisp the first two years, but it is absolutely gorgeous here this year and I'm not seeing any burn. Now these are more drought tolerant than most hydrangeas, but they're not as drought tolerant as most of the plants I have in the rest of my garden. So what I did is I planted them here next to my neighbor's lawn and they do get a little bit of extra lawn water here. Now the rest of what I want to color is what I plant for texture and foliage color because texture and foliage color is just as important as maybe even more important than flower color. First thing that I have that I absolutely love is my variegated iris. The variegated iris is a beautiful pop of color, very drought tolerant, and it brings a lot of interest to the garden. Next one, it's a little scrawny and scraggly, but it's just because it was transplanted early this spring. But when these fill out, they're absolutely gorgeous. This is a nine bark. It's a little devil nine bark, and I'll post another video up at the top that talks about nine barks. I love little devil nine barks for their color and their texture. Grasses are very important. This one turns red in the fall. The tips turn red in the fall. This is a Russell brush. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's a switch grass and I'll put the name up on the screen so you can see what it's spelled like. But this gives a beautiful fall color, as does my Amber Jubilee nine bark. This one turns beautiful scarlet colors in the fall. So I will do another fall tour so you can see what those uh, fall colors look like. And this shows, and this time of year, we have some great contrast between the flowers, which are right here. The flowers are white. 
and the seed pods, which stay on the rest of the year, and they're orange. So this is a really beautiful decorative plant, and I absolutely love it. This is a, and I don't even really know the real name for it. This is a, this is a red bud, a weeping red bud. I think it's Golden Falls. I'll look that up and I'll also post that name on the screen. But isn't that pretty? The brilliant yellow foliage, you know, just cascading down and it has pink flowers in the early spring is an absolutely gorgeous plant. I have loved it. I wasn't sure if it would survive here without being burnt and without without dying because of the dry winters that we're having, but it seems to be doing absolutely lovely. The last one that we're going to cover over here for color and texture is my laced up elderberry. Now, isn't that gorgeous? It gives a strong structural statement and I love it against the white fence. The flowers are beautiful. And as soon as I have a pollinator that's up to size, it will actually form berries. These do need a pollinator. Another, so this is a Sambucus nigra, and it needs another pollinator of a different variety in the Sambucus nigris family. So here's the flowers. Now this guy is little, it's not much to show for right now, but this is a fine line buckthorn and it's going to have the most gorgeous yellow fall colors. It'll mask the gutter against the house and it'll contrast nicely with my laced up elderberry. So here's a view of my side yard in the wind. Another one that I didn't mention that I love for fall and winter color is my weeping blue spruce. I think he's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Now here's my front yard. Once again, I'll post a picture of what it looked like with the lawn. And I planted a lot of the same plants and some different ones, so I won't cover the ones that are the same as the other side, but I will cover the ones that I haven't shown you yet. But one thing I wanted to say first is I like to have, when I plan designs, I like to have repeated colors and textures. So I guess one of the ones that I didn't cover on the other side that I'll cover now is my one of my very favorite plans. I, plants I included in every single one of my designs, but this is a Tor Spirea. This one is Glow Girl because it has yellow foliage. The fall color is probably some of the best that I have in my yard, and I'll post a picture of what it looks like in the fall up here. But this goes beautifully with my Little Devil Nine Bark. It also is gorgeous with my Catmint right here, which is another one flower that I use for color. Catmint is a long, long bloomer. It starts blooming for me in April or May, just depending on how cool the spring is, and it goes until the frost kills it in the fall. So it is a long bloomer and it attracts all sorts of butterflies. You can see this little tiny guy here. It attracts hummingbirds and it attracts bees. So I love this one. And I think it looks really beautiful with the Glow Girl Spirea. But the now back to what I was saying about what I like to do with design. is so I like to repeat colors and I like to repeat textures so that your eye is, so that the whole landscape is unified. So over here, like I showed you on the other side, this is my, this is my moonshine yarrow. This is what it looks like when it's blooming. I think it's beautiful. I have one on the other side next to my little devil nine bark, which is on the other side which is next to my switchgrass, which is, this is the same switchgrass as on the other side. And then on the other side, I also have a Glow Girl Spirea. For the blue on the other side of my property, I have the lavender. So we have all of these colors repeating. Another combination, which is smaller, that I repeated in, in different areas of my yard, is I have my little burgundy sedum. We have my blue fescue. We have a little penstemon that blooms early in the spring. The Angelina sedum, which is one of my favorite sedums. And this one, which is getting taken over by weeds, which I need to weed it out. But this is a variegated thyme. So I've repeated this in several areas of the yard. We have the blue fescue repeated right there without the combination that I was showing you. But here's that combination again with the yellow Angelina sedum, the variegated thyme, 
the blue fescue and this the other sedum, the fall fall blooming sedum. And I repeated that same combination over here. So as your eye hits those combinations, it's drawn through the landscape and it's and it's definitely unified. Another way I did a unification is my daffodils, my tulips, and my irises are not scattered randomly. They're put in like a river and they all follow the same path. So they start on the far end of my property, sweep around like in a little river. They come up through and make a sweeping arc through here. And then my niece just got home, so she blocked our view of the side yard but the river of irises and daffodils and tulips come up through my side yard here. So that's another way to unify the color. Another thing that I did is the blue of my lavender. The blue of the lavender starts here, pops up over here, sweeps down over here and then it sweeps up with the two remaining lavender over here. Now you can't see it right now but I'll also post a picture of it. The lavender and my lilies bloom at the same time. These lilies are orange and the orange with the blue of the lavender is absolutely gorgeous. So I've got an orange lily there. We have a white capstone lily over here. And this fall, I'm actually going to transplant some of these white lilies so that they're reflected over here in the center up near the iris. So you're going to have the white sweeping down and around, and then the orange lilies go up and behind the lavender. So those are the colors that I like this time of year. Now we have some other ones that are starting to bloom that are new to me, and I wanted to show you my center area here. Now I plant this center area to have lower growing perennials. I'm a local scape partner and you can look up what local scape is, local scapes is online. You can Google it, but it's a way of planting. It's a water wise method of planting that's specific for here in Utah. But for local scapes, you have to have a central open shape, which is an open area that is clean and clear and a place for the eye to rest. But I really wanted more plants, so this is not a true local scape, but I decided to give it a little cleaner look by having lower growing plants. So none of these plants in the front here get over two feet tall. And I planned them for a succession of color. So the color that we have that comes in first is my two foot by two, well maybe it's more three foot by three foot tall for Scythia. This will be my early spring color along with the daffodils. So we've got three of those. They're little tiny bushes. This is their first year, so they didn't have flowers on them yet. We also have drops of Jupiter right here. This is an oregano that is yellow. So we're gonna have a yellow contrast between my blue oak grass, which gets about two and a half feet tall. And the blue oak grass can stay up all winter. Then we have a triple duty plant this is the Lowscape Hedger Aronia, or chokeberry. Now I've showed you chokeberries before. I'll probably do a plant of the week on chokeberry. But in the spring, this has beautiful white flowers. In the summer, it's going to have darker berries. And then in the fall, it gets absolutely gorgeous dark red color. So the foliage in the fall will be one of the color contrasts. And I'm really excited to see that up against the blue oak grass. A new one that I just planted is the Cup Sage. I'll put the name on the screen because this is a new one and I'm not sure if I got that name right. But this is a beautiful, beautiful silvery foliage and it's going to have blue flowers. So I think that's gonna be really pretty here. And it's going to bloom about this time of year through fall. And I think that'll be really pretty contrast up against the yellow of the drops of Jupiter oregano. So these will spread about 18 inches. The next one will be my summer color. I planted three in the middle here. They're going to be bright red. This is fire chalice or zauchinaria. 
So the hummingbirds are going to love this. It has a hummingbird shaped flower. I'll do another video on it when it's in bloom. But this is going to be a later summer all the way through fall bloomer. This is going to disappear in the winter. The blue oak grass will stay over the winter. You know, it may brown out a little bit, but that'll give us some texture. I also leave, and I didn't cover those yet, but I have my variegated feather reed grass. This one is Overdam. The Overdam is really pretty. I love the variegation on it. It makes it shine in the sun. This one's just starting to get its seed heads, but these are kind of taller. They get about six feet tall when they're fully bloomed. So these are the backdrop for the lower plants in the front. Now we have another new to me plant and it's turning out to be one of my very favorites and it does stay semi evergreen over the winter. This one is partridge feather. Isn't it gorgeous? It's got these beautiful little button yellow blooms and then it's got that feathery foliage. So this is June. I think this is a little bit late because we've had a very cool spring, but this blooms in June and it has a couple of weeks of bloom and then it goes back to being this gorgeous foliage. Then these are my annuals that this is a very drought tolerant annual and I absolutely love it. It brings in pollinators and beneficial insects and I have had it in my yard every single year and will keep it every year. This is an alyssum. Now it's, I'm going to have to hand water these because the rest of this can be watered every, right now I think I can go every two weeks with it. And I think by next year, I can go at least once a month with the watering. All of these are extremely drought tolerant. The only ones that I'm gonna to have to hand water are the strawberries and the alyssum, but I'm willing to do that for their color. And then these are brand new. Aren't these gorgeous? I was not going to do dianthus because you do need to deadhead them, but look at that color. And this is going to kind of be a bridge between when these start blooming and the zauchinaria starts blooming. So we're gonna have flower color in here. So we'll have kind of a succession of color. Not everything is going to be blooming all at the same time. They each are going to have their season, but there's always going to be something in here blooming. Another one of my favorites for color and texture, and I've created a video about this, is the Mexican feather grass. And look at that in the wind. Look how it shines, how it moves. One of my favorite grasses. Now it has not been invasive in this bed right here but it's been extremely invasive up in my garden beds. My garden beds have dry soil that gets barely any water. It's not, it's never been amended, you know, between my garden beds. I try to keep mulch over the top, but if there's not mulch over the top, it just reseeds rampantly. So if you have a really, really dry area and you want it completely filled with the grass, use this. If you don't want it to reseed itself, put mulch down because it doesn't seem to be reseeding itself in the mulch. The last things that I wanted to show you up here is my lilac. Now the lilac blooms in the spring just before the iris and it's a beautiful dark purple and it contrasts beautifully with this lemony lace elderberry. So I'm going to keep my lilac pruned up so that the elderberry has room. That'll get four by four and we'll just fill out. It's got gorgeous yellow foliage color. It will have white flowers, but this one does not really produce berries. And if it did produce berries, the berries are poisonous on this elderberry but I think ornamentally it's beautiful against the lilac. We also have my germander here. This is an evergreen, semi-evergreen over the winter, and it's got beautiful little pink flowers. So when this starts filling out, you know, start, starting next year, because this is a new plant, when this all, area all fills out, it's gonna be beautiful with the variegated iris, the glow girl spirea, which fall, the fall color is gonna contrast beautifully with the lemony lace elderberry and the yellow mums. And then we've got another germander on this side. So hopefully you can kind of see what I'm trying to achieve with my front yard. It's gonna be fun to see it fill in and see how it turns out. It's definitely going to be a work in progress and it's gonna be something where I'm gonna be tearing things out, adding new things in, and it's going to be changing until I've got it the way I want it. But the thing that I'm happy about is that it's going to be a spot where I don't need to mow the lawn, don't need to add a ton of fertilizer and I'm not going to need to water it very often and it's going to be full of color and hopefully beautiful all year round so if you enjoy my videos I hope you like and subscribe and share them with your friends it really helps out my channel and helps me be able to make more videos like this please go enjoy your day and have a wonderful garden adventure